Bow vlog. Okay, so um, I recently watched a video, Brave, video, movie, film, whatever you want to call it. Um, the Brave with the Scottish ginger girl with the hair and her really cool bow. And it inspired me to try and make my bows a little bit more decorative. I've kind of been neglect kind of been trying to make the bows as powerful as possible which is kind of pointless because if I make a very powerful bow then sure I'll be like oh we made a very powerful bow you know it's not like I'm going to do anything with it because I don't hunt and I don't have any archery targets or anything so there's not really much I can do with it but if I make a pretty bow I can be like oh my god look at my pretty bow that's okay right so what I've got here now this is the same bow, you've already seen this bow, but you have not seen it in its current form. Uh, this was the bow that I made that was um, the kind of the first decent one. Um, yeah, the one the one I made at beach. So this is the beach bow, and it was dark last time we saw it, but now it is light. And that is because I've taken a lot off it. Um, and I can't... There we are, let's try and show you. So it's a recurve bow now. I... Um, covered the ends in oil, uh, quite a lot of oil, sunflower oil I think it was, it doesn't matter what oil it is, as long as it's oil, and then I slowly heated it up so um, the oil helps transfer the heat without kind of charring it, so without making the, the wood brittle, but it, it makes the uh, molecules inside the wood jiggle around a lot um, so that they can uh, so that they can be bent and then when they cool down they stay sealed so what I did is I took my vice into the kitchen heated it up over the stove by going back forward turn back forward turn back forward turn so the whole thing from here to here was heated up quite a lot like very hot um, to the point where the oil was actually bubbling it was starting to bubble on top of it so it was uh, really really hot and then I wedged it in my vice and then pulled back down and it made this great recurve which goes along to the other end. Also what I did is um, uh, something important when you're making bows is following f following the grain and there was a grain going all the way from one end of the bow and it came over here and um, I basically shaped it down into the handle and I'm going to try and show you although it's probably not going to come up on the webcam. Oh no you can see it. Uh, you can see the growth rings here and that shows that I've cut down into the handle to make this shape. I also heated up the handle and then bent it like this on my knee um, to give it a little bit more of a recurve thing. So this is actually a double recurve bow. Um, and it's actually increased the power quite a lot. Um, I, I I don't know how powerful this is now, but it's a lot more powerful than it was. And it fires so much better, so much better. I can um, shoot this almost half across my field now, but I just, I love the way this looks. So what I did is also I wrapped some of this stuff. So I uh, went shopping with my parents the other day, um, food shopping, and I saw this. And this is um, just kind of, uh, I can't remember what it's called, this d downing, yeah, there we are, pearl downing darning thread. And it's very, very weak um, thread, but it's also very, very thin. So um, I wrapped a shitload of it around here um, just to show me which side the top. Now, it's important to know which side the top is on the bow because if you you're always going to have one limb that's slightly stronger than the other one, and you want your weak, no your sh strong limb to be on the bottom, and that's because when you hold it in the handle, you hold it slightly further down towards the strong limb, and that puts more pressure on the strong limb and less pressure on the weak limb, which evens it all out so that the bow pulls evenly, and it also means that the arrow is then more towards the centre, whereas if I hold it straight in the middle, the arrow is going to be slightly higher up. I know it shoots as well. So let me just string this up. Oh, try and remember which string it is now. Pop that there. Yeah. So I think I've taken weight off this bow. I've taken power out of it by doing what I've done. But um, let's just show you there. There we go. Uh, it's worth it because it looks so much nicer. And I'll try and pull this in a way that you can see. There we go. And it does have quite a lot of power, which is really nice. There we are. So it's, it keeps the recurves at the end, which is really nice. And that fires a long way, so that's sweet. So then, I also got my, um, what do you call it, um, draw knife today, which is uh, basically two handles with a blade in between. And it's really, really good for shaving off pieces of wood. Um, so then I took the bow 
the beach log that I showed you the other day, which is a lot wider than that one. And I made this, and this has been my day project. So I made this in a day, which I'm really happy with, but um, it's by no means done. It, it's still very, very heavy, which is bad. Also, it's not completely seasoned properly. It's still quite wet. And as a result, when I pull back the bowstring on it, it pretty much molds to the shape. So I need to keep, I need to keep it dried in this state. Like, yeah. Now you can see it does have recurve, but only at one end. This end is straight. And I don't exactly know why, but I've kind of got a theory. Basically, I did do the recurve heat treating thing, um, like I did in that one. I don't think I heated it up as much. Um, I think I rushed it a bit more. Um, also, these limbs at the end are a lot thinner than those ones at the end. Yeah, a lot thinner. And as a result, they didn't bend as well. And as, basically, as soon as I strung the bow, the, all of the recurve, and there was a lot of recurve, it kind of went like that. It just instantly went back to normal, which is frustrating, but um, no, I guess I learnt my lesson. Don't make your ends too thin. Uh, so this is a lot thicker, it's a lot bigger, and it's a lot more powerful. I haven't actually measured how powerful it is yet because, of, like I said, it hasn't been properly seasoned. Um, but I did exactly the same thing with the handle where I shaped it back. Uh, I haven't shaped this as much as I'd like to. I should take a bit more of here and here. But there is that. It's also got some nasty kind of gouges in the wood, which you can't see. But it's, not, it's just not as good as that one, which is a shame because this one I thought I'd learn from this. Bow, but let me string it up anyway. I think I can actually string this without having to stand up. Oh, sorry, I had to reuse an old bow string. So to make the bow, this was for a six foot bow. This is a five foot bow, I think. Um, I had to tie lots and lots of knots in the bow strings so I could get it the right length, which is stupid. Let me just try and... My string nooks are not very good either. Right, let's try. Position my... Okay. There we go. And there is that one strung. Which looks really nice. Um, now this one does have, this limb is a lot um, stronger than this limb. It's not very well tilted, but if I hold it low and I put my fingers in between these two knots here, um, it does pull nice and evenly and a lot with a lot more power than, uh, than that one. Which is cool. So yeah, that's that's the little bow vlog. I'll be putting these up on my second channel now, unless it's like a big thing, um, just because people don't really want to see bows, of course, because it's a Minecraft channel, not a bow channel. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I've been doing today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.